Foremost news from Southeast Asia. Welcome back to Durian ASEAN. Today is Monday, and you are at Durian ASEAN Dailies, where we deliver news from Southeast Asia. And then you are with Grace Cho, where um, uh, let's see what we have today. This morning is apparently we. Just stay in Malaysia for a while because there are a few uh, incidents that happened uh, nearby Loyat Plaza. Said apparently five injured in a mob attack uh, nearby the area. So they believed uh, to be uh, journalists and in a mob attack nearby this Loyat Plaza and another police uh, dispersed protesters at the shopping mall. So. Well, because of this, it's very interesting that one MDB news is sort of uh, is covered and also disappeared uh, for a while. And uh, from that incident, an eyewitness said a group of uh, 50 to 60 men they barged into the food outlet nearby the shopping mall and assaulted the patrons with motorcycle helmet. Um, it was around midnight, and uh, among these people, uh, they have been uh, targeted as a media photographer and a journalist who tried to protect the prof- uh, photographer was apparently beaten up. And also, according to a reporter, a group of people shielded the two journalists uh, from the uh, this angry mob. And the one two later, they sorted out that uh, it was um, in nearby hospital. So. Just the last week, there was a lot of uh, stories, uh, controversial um, issues, especially regarding this one MDB. And uh, like I mentioned shortly before, that because of this, um, because of this news in Malaysia, uh, apparently the one MDB news is also sort of like covered by this highlight of news just uh, happened a few days ago, and. Uh, According to the cops, three arrested for theft in the Loya Plaza, and um, he said one individual was arrested uh, for provocative behavior at protest outside the shopping mall. And on Sunday, uh, I'm sorry, it was Saturday. A ill fight started uh, between the thugs and sales clerks after a group of youth returned to take a revenge against the retailers, uh, apparently who caught one of them allegedly shoplifting uh, early on that day. And other comments on the social media claimed that this this was sparked uh, by one of the youth uh, being a fake, uh, a sold a fake phone, and. We can also look at another issue, which is a racial issue. When uh, was it really uh, was about the phone or another customer rights, or was it something else that really they argue and eventually to fight for? And uh, we can see a lot of pictures that people gathering nearby the Loya Plaza, and not only that. Uh, Another four individuals were picked up assistance in the investigation. So it is still under uh, uh, this investigation and also try to find out and hope that uh, we can uh, see the solution to all these uh, issues in our nation first. Well, let's move on to um, outside from Malaysia. We talk about the Rohingya issue. And apparently, a Rohingya's uh, roti seller story leads to a sort of big break in an uh, investigation, apparently. So, this sheltering in the back room of the provincial Thai police station is about a 35 years old street vendor who triggered a human trafficking investigation that was uh, reverberated across the Southeast Asia. And um, the then what happened was uh, he is a Rohingya Muslim and he is mostly stateless group from the Western Myanmar. And uh, he had a this living for the past decade selling the fried bread or um, in Southeast Asia we call it roti and then uh, from a, a push cart in the Nakhon Si Tamarat city in the southern Thailand. Then 
his nephew uh, fell into the uh, hands of a murderous human traffickers. So this lotus seller, uh, desperate to be to save him, ultimately led to a discovery of a scores of these uh, jungle graves of the Thai Malaysian border in May, and this sparked a whole regional uh, crisis over this both lots of unwanted Rohingya. So now uh, this lotus seller. Uh, He's afraid and also fears the traffickers may target him and his new home in the police station is a primitive form of witness protection. And also his predicament raises questions about the long-term effectiveness of Thailand's crackdown on the resilient and lucrative trafficking uh, syndicates. And also witnesses have been intimidated. The key suspects are represented by lawyers uh, with powerful political connections. Uh, and also while 72 people have been arrested, police are still seeking many others. And apparently, uh, uh, Katrina Adams, a spokesman of the State Department of East Asia and Pacific uh, Bureau, said uh, this year report only covers this year to March 2015, so it will not include the latest crackdown, apparently. And the police major uh, general Tai Chai, uh, Pitanil Labut, who led the earlier anti-trafficking efforts in southern Thailand, was told his investigation was damaging uh, Thailand's image. And so apparently he said no one cared, and he declined to be more specific about this who was telling him that. And Deputy National Police Chief Ag uh, Aung San Damot, who is in charge of the anti-trafficking cra uh, cracking down in Thailand, said the military government that came into power in Kut last May took the issues very seriously. And also according to him, he said, I don't know what the policy was of the previous administrations. Uh, he took up his uh, this trafficking issue on the military government and also the military government has given this issue more importance apparently. So this prank on our uh, Rohingya issue has been uh, quite it's getting worse and worse uh, and for the past few months especially and uh, not only the Thailand especially the Myanmar a lot of people are very afraid of getting caught and at the same time whoever also found or has found a uh, rohingya community they are also in the sort of in the dark uh, corner and also in the fear that someone will find them and also be able to um, harm on them and apparently there are hundreds of these people who are, who are involved in this incident. When it comes to Rohingya community, again, it is a Southeast Asia problem. And then as an ASEAN, we really need to come up with a solution to this. A lot of reports are released and a lot of stories are released at the same time. And it is a serious issue. Uh, we'll come back after this short break. Uh, stay tuned. We'll deliver more political aspect of Southeast Asia. ASEAN Dailies, first and foremost news from Southeast Asia. Welcome back to Drian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. And you are with Grace at ASEAN Dailies. We deliver news from Southeast Asia. And we are here here at the political aspect of Southeast Asia where um, now we'll deliver news and also discuss some issues that has been happening in Cambodia. And apparently um, because of the democratic system in that country, there has been sort of uh, kinds of the uh, attack on the Cambodian democracy. And uh, Phnom Penh has been a buzz with the protests uh, apparently this week, and which was not sort of unusual for the Cambodian capital. Um, the farmers taking to the street its protest against the state sponsor land grabs, or even the government workers pushing for a living wage. And apparently, this Cambodia's vibrant civil society continues to be a thorn in uh, in the side of the country's long-serving uh, kleptocratic government. And this could be about to change, and a, a, this repressive law which threatens to silence all the government critics is in danger of passing, uh, which was just the last week of Friday. And this uh, 
does a set of these major alarm bells、uh, for the foreign governments who still contribute more than the third of、uh, Cambodia's budget.、Uh, in the in the face of rampant corruption from the government elites, these donors rely on the civil society groups truly, and also to deliver many of their promises to alleviate poverty and promote human rights and. Uh, perhaps social justice as well, but surprisingly, this international community,、uh, it has been largely silent on one of the biggest threats to、uh, democracy in、uh, Cambodia's recent history, and、uh, this law apparently. Can、uh, give the government total control over、uh, the civil society, allowing、uh, them to pick and choose which group can operate, close down critical organizations, and also lock up anyone who consider、um, they consider a troublemaker. Even small informal gatherings could be criminalized, apparently. And considering gathering some people together to discuss uh, uh, perhaps the homelessness in your neighborhood, for example, and also or To raise money for cancer research,、uh, this group would have been registered with the Ministry of in-、um, Interior or potentially face a prosecution. So, again, the question is: Where is the freedom of speech in the democratic system in the one nation? If one can't raise one's opinion towards certain issues, or it doesn't need to be huge issue, a small,、um, uh, perhaps the problems that's been going around. What's the point of having democracies? And in the style, an honest style, Cambodian groups aren't really taking、uh, this lying down and have been out marching every this week. At Pelia、uh, last week Monday, 14 international NGOs, including Global Witness, wrote、uh, the latest in a series of public letters against the、uh, Lango. Lango is the first for.、Uh, Uh, first of a four repressive law in the pipeline designed to crush the movement of the change that began building around Cambodia's 2013 elections. So this time directly to the Prime Minister, warning of the devastating impact the law will have on the Cambodian society, and also urging for it to be dropped. And Cambodia's opposition party has also spoken outly,、um, which was very strongly against it, and. Apparently,、uh, the Cambodia's、uh, biggest aid donor, who is the U.S. government, is a critic too,、um, deeming the laws unnecessary. With the U.S. ambassador. Ambassador to Cambodia and、uh, William Todd warning that it could seriously impact on the Cambodia's image as a destination for foreign invest- investment once it is implied, and also other governments have been slow to follow suit. The European Commission and EU member states, who in the 2014 pledged to provide around 1.8 billion dollars in assistance to、uh, Cambodia for Over five years have so far been the mute on the issues, opting for the quiet democracy,、uh, democracy instead. So where is this diplomatic church and a democracy? And also,、uh, donors like EU must publicly condemn the the LNA NGO Alango and the call for it to be dropped. So if they allow it to pass on their watch, they'll be doing a great.、Uh, A、disservice to their own、uh, taxpayers, but more importantly, the to Cambodians people who risk their freedom and even lives in their struggle for democratic freedoms and social justice as well. So Cambodia's,、uh, well, you, the the country is part of the ASEAN, and it seems that a few countries in ASEAN ASEAN region is sort of the going back. Um, and not practicing the the real meaning of the democracy in the country, and this is really worrisome not only to the nation but then throughout the ASEAN countries. And apparently, I'll、uh, go traveling to Indonesia.、Uh, President Joko Widodo is under pressure to reshuffle his uh, his uh, cabinet apparently, and it is quite difficult to find people that he can trust to replace in the key posts apparently. So he's been considering and、uh, making a very careful、um, decision when it comes to、um, uh, the cabinet and also who will be in charge of which department and how it, it should be run in the coordination and. At the meeting with the chief editors of Indonesia major news organization,、uh, 
Mr. Joko Widodo, he said, I need staffers that I can trust. And my staffers would be those who, uh, when they speak, the public believe, believes them, and also investors that believe them, the markets believe them, their words are irrefutable. And he also said, it's very hard to find. And and also he was he has struggled to govern effectively since he took office uh it was last year october and he does not have a presidential uh, spokesman uh, who has led to substantial uh discrepancies between his statement and also those who made by vice president uh joseph kala and some ministers as well the president considered that he needs a credible spokesman it is not easy to look for and he, of course he's been looking for it and it just that he hasn't found one unfortunately and and now he is in the under pressure to improve the government's performance by reshuffling his cabinet and also which is the mix of politicians from parties that supported his presidential bid and professional experts but apparently he declined to say whether it will happen or not and if Joko uh, Widodo indeed planned to reshuffle his cabinet and the ministers, he should consider this matter carefully and thoroughly so he won't make the same mistakes again, particularly in the economic and defense sectors in the co coordination of posts. So uh, with the a progress, uh, perhaps the process of the reshuffling the, his cabinet, uh, since he's taking his own consideration of choosing people very carefully, hope that it's, it happens sooner, sooner the better, that he can uh, make the whole government function uh, in his direction, in the right direction, and hope that it really, really happens soon as possible. And um, it, this is the relationship between Thailand and also uh, China, but they're not exactly with China. It's uh, coming all the way uh, regarding the name of jihad. So more than thousand ethnic uh, Uyghurs deported from the Thailand to China had been on their way to Turkey and also other parts of the Middle East, such as Syria and Iraq, uh, to which this holy war. And last week, around the 109 of them who had been the talent for years, uh, they claimed to be Turkish. The repatriations uh, were criti uh, criticized by UN refugee agency as a threat on the violation of international law. So this uh, China's official Xinhua agency uh, mentioned that 190 illegal immigrants had been on their way to join jihad, and 13 of them had fled uh, to China after being implicated in the terrorist activities. And these are the Turkic speaking Muslim minority in China and the far western region of uh, Xinjiang. The group has uh, complained of a harsh culture and as well as religious suppression as well as economic uh, marginalization under Chinese rule. And Beijing has accused this Uyghur separatist of terrorism in Xinjiang where ethnic violence has left hundreds of people to die there. And apparently in response to the report, uh, the World Uyghur Congress spokesman said uh, China is defending itself and a shocking responsibility for these people fleeing because of the policy of suppression. And the so-called radical, those who are all who hope to uh, flee China and also live a stable and dignified life in a safe and free country. So when it comes to ISIS and the Muslim community, especially those people who are fighting for in the name of Jihad. Um, of course, we've already uh, commented, also discussed the matter that those who reside in Southeast Asia, and it's getting uh, larger and larger in terms of the number and the populations. And this is pretty worrisome when it comes to not only Southeast Asia spreading to the other parts of countries such as European countries and perhaps the Northeast uh, uh, Asia countries. Uh, but uh, it is only the ASEAN as uh, the community to come up with a sort of a mechanism to be able to prevent uh, from the more uh, upcoming issues regarding this ISIS. So yes, I will, after this break, we will deliver more news on economic and business aspect of Southeast Asia. So stay tuned. And you are with Grace at ASEAN Dailies.
ASEAN Dailies, first and foremost news from Southeast Asia. Welcome back to Triana ASEAN. You are with the Grace at ASEAN Dailies, and this time we're going to deliver news uh, on the uh, economic aspect of Southeast Asia. But perhaps this time, let's go to uh, Greece. That uh, it's just an update, and uh, perhaps the discussion on eurozone and as well as the crisis, financial crisis in that country. And apparently, eurozone finance a shift are seeking further signs from Greece that it, it is serious about um, delivering the, its promises of reform and return for the debt uh, rescue. And apparently, uh, they had a meeting, and the meeting later uh, really convened uh, on uh, uh, again uh, to the to continue uh, uh, regarding the Greece economic minister. Uh, Greece, uh, economic and apparently the economic minister uh, Georgos Stankakis, uh, he mentioned that his government is committed to moving forward, but. How can we trust and by looking at the videos and articles how people do sustain their lives in the Greek Greece looks very um, very tight and that they are living on the on the on the limited budget daily and uh, they went to the specific from uh, from Greece more on the product and labor market reform and a possibly a commitment to pass this specific reform in the Greek parliament in the coming days. But uh, there are still much broader issues at stake, of course, the countries which think uh, that the numbers being talked about represent far too much money to offer Greece in the third bailout. And Finland's government appear to be uh, open, revolt about the third bailout. And Italy, on the other hand, is said to demand a deal must be pushed to draw. Uh, perhaps uh, it might have happened yesterday or even the coming up weeks uh, for the sake of European unity. So on one issue all sides agree this is not just about the future of Greece but it is about the credibility of a one single currency so Greek is still having lots of problems when it comes to finance and uh, because of that this huge debt that the Greek uh, Greece has been um, borrowing and owning uh, from other organizations and the community this is something that uh, uh, it's really hard to tell at the moment. At the same time, it is really hard to judge uh, just by looking at the situation because the Greek Prime Minister and the public, it seems to, uh, it's not synchronizing properly in terms of delivering the, the announcement and then um, uh, come up with the, I mean, the meet up, meeting up the uh, people's expectation in the country. On the other hand, uh, we talk about the business side, which is regarding this oil price. Well, it could fall even further uh, uh, despite the stabilizing in the recent month and also even in the beginning to rise modestly because of the massive uh, oversupply in the International Energy Agency. So uh, this world oil market was unable to absorb these huge volumes of oil now being produced and the price of this uh, crude fell sharply last year from $115 a barrel to in June to about $45 a barrel in January, and it's uh, currently the the crude broad crude the price is $59 a barrel, and this fall in prices have led oil firms to cut back investment and in exploration, and also uh, all seven major global oil firms have also reported annual declines in profit as a result of lower prices as well. And it's because of the oversupplying of this oil, it's, um, according, to, um, according to the Office for the Budget Responsibility Forecast North Sea Oil, um, it's, it was mentioned that the North Sea oil and the gas had already fallen about 80% in the last three years. So apparently the oil market was massively oversupplied uh, in the second quarter of 2015 and it remains so today. Well, oil price, uh, the according to the country, apparently Libya has the highest, and the next is uh, Iran and Algeria, Nigeria, and then the last one as a quarter. But, uh, uh, however, the, this increase in the production have come just as a demand for uh, oil and in the economy across the world from Europe to China. Uh, and this is the world's second largest consumer of oil. It has slowed down. So, 
、uh, it was expected to grind to the, the halt in 2016, perhaps as lower oil prices and spending the cuts to take toll. And、um, with this oil price dropping,、uh, also、uh, when it comes to currency, it is also quite affecting and also affects the whole nation wise as well. And then moving on to ASEAN, it looks like no matter what ASEAN has been having、um, regarding the、uh, human rights issues and the political issues, still the whole community looks. Quite collectively strong, despite this lower and also slower、uh, global growth. And International Trade and Industry Ministry Secretary General Tan Sri Dr. Rebecca Fatima Stamaria told、uh, told the region could focus on increasing intra-ASEAN trade and also strengthening、uh, economic integration and also amid the current weaker global economic environment. Well. According to them, they are still doing well despite what is happening globally, and then they are managing the issues. So, when you look at the these issues that are happening globally,、uh, we are also doing quite well, and we need to focus more on the increasing intra-ASEAN trade and also economic integration, and they will continue to stand out the sea of gloom as well. And、uh, when it comes to ASEAN as a whole community. Um, and also, it is a it it is a heading to to achieve,、uh, which has high level task force for the、uh, ASEAN Economic Communication Integration,、uh, which will conclude the end of this year. So among the focus is the removal of the trade barriers, increasing standard, and also mutual recognition agreement for the ease of doing business. Apparently, so hope, really, really hope that、uh, we can achieve something out of ASEAN and then make ASEAN really, really proud. So、uh, that's the end of the economic aspect of Southeast Asia.、Uh, you are with Grace at ASEAN Daily. But stay tuned. We'll deliver deliver news、uh, on the、uh, social art and perhaps the entertainment side of Southeast Asia. ASEAN Daily. First and foremost, news from Southeast Asia. Hey, this is Arlene. Hi, this is Grace. Okay, starting on our、uh, social culture news of Southeast Asia.、Uh, do you know that ASEAN cultures will be featured at an art center? So the culture ministry uh, in uh, will. I'm not sure in which country it is, but、uh, Culture Minister Permanent Secretary Dr. Al Pinan Poyash Nanda、uh, will meet,、uh, have met with relevant officer to discuss the center, the art center to include the Foreign Affairs Ministry's、uh, Department of ASEAN Affairs heading the diplomats and representative from nine other ASEAN member states. And this is very good news because uh, finally, uh, I mean, all the small organization have been working on to to highlight all this cultural part of ASEAN. However, with having the cultural ministry、uh, secretary、uh, being in the charge of having more、uh, sort of art performances, and this is to enhance the the ties through the cultural dimension as to、mm-hmm. encourage better understanding. And that certainly, when it comes to ASEAN culture, we all know the South. East Asia has rich in culture and also when it comes to historical values.、Mm. So it seems like、uh, the Thai are definitely leading the way in trying to promote a more robust ASEAN culture.、Uh, it seems that they agree the center will enhance the. The ties through culture dimensions and encourage better understanding, other than through the perspective of economy and investment, which is true for so long.、Uh, when we talk about Southeast Asia,、uh, it's always been about、uh, the focus on security, economy, and investment. But ASEAN is more than that. ASEAN community should be more about the society, the people, and of、yep. course the arts and culture. That's definitely true.、Uh, so、uh, we are hoping and also expecting to see more of this in the future, as in、uh, coming up with the whole ASEAN community to focus perhaps more on the culture part、mm-hmm. and also entertainment part in Southeast Asia. And on the other hand, when we talk about Southeast Asia's arts and culture, don't forget also when it comes to sports.、Uh, sports is 
also part of the element of ASEAN. And talking about sports, uh, just to put a focus on the news in Malaysia regarding on food. Uh, the football news. Uh, apparently, our Johor FA president Tunku Ismail has resigned. And then, um, uh, this is the Johor Crown Prince. Uh, he stepped down as the president uh, of the Johor Football Association, and it was. Sh- the announcement just made by perhaps last week that um, it was uh, that he had been appointed um, already his replacement and also to consider all the matters pertaining to the club at a, as a future plan. So we really don't know why he resigned, but then he already found his replacement. So when it comes to structure and the building of the football academy and a new stadium, hopefully we can see more of the, the bright side when it comes to football mm-hmm. in Malaysia. Uh, it's quite shocking to hear that he's resigning. I'm not sure for what f- reason because uh, he has been on the news for quite some time, uh, of course, for the wrong reason. Uh, but for this particular issue, uh, perhaps we should dig more on why he decides uh, to uh, step down instead uh, um, uh, of focusing on football as his main passion. Mm-hmm. But on the other hand, uh, talking about sports also, uh, I don't know whether you watched uh, the tournament yesterday. Yes, uh, I did watch. Wimbledon final. Yes. <laughs> it's quite interesting because uh, it was a very uh, real fight that Federer gave to Djokovic. Uh, although, unfortunately, <laughs> because I'm a Federer f- uh, fan, unfortunately, uh, Novak Djokovic uh, snagged the uh, uh, Wimbledon title for 2015. A lot of people were apparently so, uh, so, uh, supporting the Frederick, but then it was was quite uh, sort of uh, foreseeing the result already by the performance from the both sides. The Djokovic had a lot of uh, sort of aggressive attack uh, rather than the having a defensive attack when it comes to tennis performance. And uh, he was sort of a disappointing end to his beat. And then there was a sort of a break because of the uh, drizzling and rain. But then the, the, the show up, uh, played and continued. Uh, but however, after some time, Djokovic did could not um, win again, <laughs> mm-hmm. and a lot of uh, people were having a lot of people were having hopes on the federal this time. But well, to have a third uh, <laughs> Wimbledon uh, the championship, uh, congratulations to <laughs> Djokovic. Mm-hmm. Um, Unfortunately, Roger Federer didn't deliver on the latest sets. Uh, that's the reason why he somehow unable to snack uh, the title. Uh, he performed poorly at the later uh, 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 sets of the game. But uh, one thing interesting about Djokovic, he has been quite a fighter. Um, he gave a lot of really very clean shots, I would say. And... And one of the interesting part is uh, after he won, realizing that he won, part of the Serbian tradition is by celebrating, yeah. uh, pulling out a piece of center court grass and eating it. How disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a part of a, cer- a ceremony celebration, I guess. <laughs> but then, uh, I personally, I don't watch tennis, but yesterday it was quite uh, fired up when the whole performance and hearing the people supporting tennis, it was another spirit, spirit not only from the football or basketball, but in tennis as well. So that's all for our news today. You can always catch us on our daily news commentary, uh, Monday to Friday, 8 to 9 o'clock. And as well as, don't forget to uh, leave us your feedback. Feedbacks are always welcome on our social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and uh, YouTube as well. And we also have our own app, Durian ASEAN on Android. So download and listen to us at Durian ASEAN.